Darren Marlar Radio Show Audio Rewind. Could eating the same thing every day help you lose weight? Experts say yes, and I'll explain on that coming up. Hey, I'm Darren Marlar, and texting. It's only it's only text, it's only dangerous if somebody else is driving and texting, right? About half of American drivers between the ages of 21 and 24, they say that they have thumbed messages or emailed from the driver's seat. And what's more, many drivers don't think that it's dangerous when they do it, only when others do it. At any given moment last year, on America's streets and highways, nearly one in every 100 car drivers were texting, emailing, surfing the web, or otherwise using a handheld electronic device. Man, I, I can't believe people are this stupid. I was so angry about this, I almost dropped my droid after reading about it on my way to work this morning. Do you like scary stories? Well, if so, you might want to check out my show Weird Darkness, which you can find at WeirdDarkness.com. Hey, I'm Darren Marlar. The birthday wrap-up is coming up. First, though, are you looking to drop a few pounds? Well, here's an idea for you. Monotonous meals – that might just be the ticket – suggests a study finding that people who maintained a weight loss of at least 30 pounds for six years, they had significantly less variety in their diets compared with those who had lost weight within the previous six months. A lack of diversity helps slash calories, says J. Graham Thomas, Ph.D., an associate professor at the Warren Alpert Medical School at Brown University. Thomas notes that just the sheer breadth of foods that we have available to us these days, it could be partly to blame for the obesity epidemic. When you eat the same food over and over, well, you tend to eat less. Researchers call this sensory-specific satiety. We call it bored taste buds. <laughs> so, so try it with just one meal a day. Just, just see if maybe you can do the same meal each day. If you want to read a little bit more about this to see if maybe it's something you want to try, uh, I do actually have a link to this in my blog, which you can get to at DarrenMarlar.com. Uh, that's D-A-R-R-E-N-M-A-R-L-A-R. -R -R. It's uh, in my blog there. Should be able to find it there, and uh, I don't know. Let me know. Email me and see if, and, and let me know if this works for you. Because then maybe I'll try. This is the Darren Marlar Radio Show Audio Rewind. You might be sabotaging your daily workout and not even know you're doing it, and you can blame it on your smartphone. I'll tell you why coming up here in just a bit. Hey, uh, I'm Darren Marlar. The smallest room in the house. Well, apparently it's turning into the reading room for people in the upper income bracket. According to a survey, people whose household income is more than $50,000 a year, they're more likely to read a book in the bathroom than the lower income earners. 58% compared to 39%. Although, I think maybe this, this study's just a tad flawed, because I think the rest of us are also reading in the bathroom. It just happens to be Facebook and Twitter. Hi, I'm Darren Marlar, and if you like to hear uh, parts of the show that maybe you missed today, well, you can find them at DarrenMarlar.com. I'll post a podcast of the show afterwards. That's DarrenMarlar.com. Coming up is our moment of duh. An attempt to stop future jailbreaks becomes a moment of duh. Here's today's question impossible. On one um, on a on an American one dollar bill, what animal is in the upper left hand corner of the one encased in the shield? Again, on an American one dollar bill, what animal is in the upper left hand corner of the one which is encased in the shield? I give you the answer to that one coming up here in just a bit. Uh, all right, going on here, a gym buddy. All right, let, let's say you're at the gym. All right, you're on the treadmill, and a buddy calls while you're on the treadmill and uh, says that he'll meet you tomorrow. Or, or your girlfriend. You're, again, you're on the treadmill. Your girlfriend texts you to ask about dinner when you might be over. Or a news bulletin pings on your phone, so you check it out, and then you decide to post it on Twitter. All the while you're on the the uh, on on the uh, the treadmill. Okay. So, uh, yeah, apparently it's true. Paying too much attention to your smartphone during exercise, it can sap your focus and your intensity, slow you down, even lower your heart rate, according to a study at Kent State University. In this study, 44 students, they were, uh, they were put on treadmills for 30-minute sessions to test how uh, talking, texting, listening to music, 
how it affected their workouts compared with not using a phone at all. And while the stats came in, phone chatting that reduced subjects' running speeds by 10 percent. Texting was even uh, a bigger drag. It lowered the speeds by 10 percent and the heart rates by 5 percent. However, listening to music, that boosted the heart rate and it upped average treadmill speeds. The problem on that, though, is, I mean, really, how many of us can listen to tunes but then resist answering calls and texts when they come in? Hi, I'm Frank Zubkoff Zunitsevsky, owner of Belly's Fitness for Men, the all-man fitness club. At Belly's Fitness for Men, we don't make you get in touch with your feminine side by prancing around doing aerobics, no. And all the barbells in our weight training area are labeled 10 to 20 pounds heavier than they actually are. That way, even your manly pride gets built up. Belly's Fitness for Men, where we put the bar in barbells with happy hour of pretty much every hour in our men-only sports bar and with free deep-fried cheese curds. Join Belly's Fitness for Men today and get our manly shape up for swimming classes. You won't learn how to swim, but you'll learn how to suck in your gut at the lake when the ladies go past. So remember, if you're looking for a place where testosterone is still the king, it's Belly's Fitness for Men, where we put the gym in gymnasium. You make your wife wonder where you've been when you join Belly's Fitness for Men. Hey, if you'd like a few laughs after the show, you can check out Daily Dose of WeirdNews.com. I post a new episode there every day at Daily Dose of WeirdNews.com. I'm Darren Marlar. Time for today's moment of duh and the individuals of today's story. Well, they're people that run a prison in Brazil. You see, a helicopter was used in a recent jailbreak, so the prison officials ordered all prison guards and staff at an all-Brazilian prison to shoot and then ask questions later at any helicopter attempting to land in the jail. One problem, though, the Brazilian government, they also had a group of prisoners being escorted by the police being delivered by helicopter to one of the prisons under a secret operation. So secret, in fact, even the prison officials were not informed that they were coming. Yeah, you can guess what happened. Prison guards began firing on the police helicopter as it came in for a landing. Fortunately, nobody was hurt. But the helicopter did have to make an emergency landing after being hit. Duh. Brain freeze. What causes brain freeze? And how do you stop it once it begins? I've got some uh, headache-saving information coming your way later on in the show. I'm Darren Marlar, and a study by Bankrate.com it finds that 76% of Americans they don't have enough money set aside to survive a six-month emergency, such as a job loss. Man. That's that's the you know I'm totally prepared for six months without a job. I have access to my neighbor's Wi-Fi signal and a list of pizza delivery phone numbers, so I'm good to go. This is the Darren Marlar Radio Show Audio Rewind. Is the hair of the dog that bit you is that a good method for uh, dealing with a hangover? I'll give you the uh, solution to that in our brain on drug story coming up. Our question impossible answer today, here with the question again, on an American $1 bill, what animal is in the upper left-hand corner of the one encased in the shield? Well, the answer is an owl. Also, if you got a really fine eye, there's a spider hidden in uh, the front upper right-hand corner as well. Well, you know, it's, it's one of those signs of summer. I mean, you're happily eating an ice cream cone when BAM! That icy cold, it snakes up your teeth, seemingly into your brain. Ice cream brain freezes. It hurts, doesn't it? Well, Wake Forest Baptist Medical Center neuroscientist Dwayne Godwin, he explains everything you ever wanted to know about brain freeze. So, well, in case you're not familiar with what ice cream brain freeze is, it's that painful feeling you get when you're really quickly eating or drinking something that's icy cold. It actually has a medical term, which I'm not even going to try and pronounce. If, if you want to see what it's actually called, I have it in my blog at DarrenMarler.com, but it's not really all that important. Anyway, why does a brain freeze happen? Well, it is your body's way of putting on the brakes. It tells you to slow down and take it easy. Whatever, whatever that icy cold thing is that you're eating or drinking, you're doing it too fast. A brain freeze, it's actually a type of headache that is rapid in onset, but it rapidly is resolved as well. 
Our mouths, says Godwin, are highly vascularized, including the tongue, and that's why we take our temperatures there. But drinking a cold beverage fast, it doesn't give your mouth time to absorb the cold very well. And so how, now, all right, once the brain freeze starts, what do you do to stop it? Because I know that's the most important thing. When, when I'm having a brain freeze, I want to know how to get rid of it fast. Immediately stop drinking the ice-cold beverage and then jam your tongue up to the roof of your mouth. Your tongue is warm and that will actually help normalize the temperature in your mouth. And then you can continue on with the icy food or beverage, just slow it down a bit. Welcome to the Himalayas! Abominable! <laughs> can you believe that? Do I look abominable to you? But why can't they call me the adorable snowman or, or the agreeable snowman for crying out loud? I'm a nice guy. Oh, would you look at that? We're out of snow cones. Uh, let me just go outside and make some more. Welcome to the Darren Marlar Radio Show. How would you like to be a part of the show? Well, if you want to visit my contact page at DarrenMarlar.com, I'd love to get an email from you. Maybe you can end up in the email bag. That's DarrenMarlar.com. D-A-R-R-E-N. M-A-R-L-A-R dot com. Time now for our Brain on Drugs story. You know, each day at this time, you know, I talk about people doing dumb things under the influence, but addiction is no laughing matter. If you are somebody, if you if uh, you know the, the, you know needs help, there's a toll-free number that you can call. It's 1-800-438-0380. That's the Addiction Hope and Helpline. 1-800-438-0380. So, is the hair of the dog that bit you a good method for dealing with a hangover? We're going to find out in today's Brain on Drugs. This is your Brain on Drugs. <laughs> it's a much cited old wives' tale. Another drink can cure your hangover. Wrong! In medieval Europe, when astrology and bloodletting were frequently employed uh, in the diagnosis and treatment of disease, well, one therapy for rabies was to place some pieces of hair from the rabid dog onto the victim's bite wound. Well, that didn't work, but it did give rise to the notion that the hair of the dog that bit you, which in this case would be a drink, can, uh, can cure a hangover. Th this concept is rather ancient, too, having first appeared in print back in 1546. And it doesn't work. The hangover develops when an elevated concentration of alcohol in your blood uh, caused by drinking falls sharply after drinking stops. The symptoms, which are typically some combination of headache, thirst, fatigue, dizziness, even nausea and general grumpiness, well, when it, it, the symptoms come when it reaches their peak when the blood alcohol level hits zero. So is there a cure for a hangover? Well, rest, hydration and aspirin can help a little bit, but they're not going to make the hangover go away. The only real cure is, uh, well, not drinking at all but I know you better than that. So the real cure is time. This is your brain on drugs. <laughs> Any questions? Hey, if you want to like me, poke me, tweet me, follow me, stalk me, you can find links to all of my social media at DarrenMarlar.com. That's D-A-R-R-E-N-M-A-R-L-A-R.com. Time now for something that uh, I think you're going to enjoy if you're looking for a little inspiration in the day. I call this Soul Glow. A young woman, she went to her mother and told her about her life and how things were so hard for her. She did not know how she was going to make it and, well, she wanted to give up. She was tired of fighting and struggling. It seemed as one problem was solved, another problem came up. Well, her mother took her to the kitchen. She filled three pots with water and placed each one on a high fire. And soon, the pots came to a boil. In the first pot, she placed carrots. In the second, she placed eggs. And in the last one, she placed ground coffee beans. She let them sit and boil without saying a word. And in about 20 minutes, she turned off the burners. She fished the, the uh, carrots out, placed them in a bowl. She pulled the eggs out, placed them in a bowl. And she ladled the coffee out and placed it in a bowl. Turning to her daughter, she asks, Tell me, what do you see? The daughter said, um, carrots, eggs, and coffee, she replied. Well, their mother brought her closer and asked her to feel the carrots. She did and noted that they were soft. The mother then asked the daughter to take an egg and break it. After pulling off the shell, she observed that it was the hard-boiled egg. And finally, the mother asked the daughter to sip the coffee. 
The daughter smiled, and she tasted its rich aroma. The daughter then asked, ''Okay, what is all this about, Mom?'' Well, the mother explained that each of these objects has faced the same adversity. A boiling water. Each reacted differently, though. The carrot went in strong, hard and unrelenting. However, after being subjected to the boiling water, it softened and became weak. The egg had been fragile. Its thin outer shell had protected its liquid interior, but after sitting through the boiling water, its inside became hardened. The ground coffee beans were unique, however. After they were in the boiling water, they had changed the water. So which are you? She asked her daughter. When adversity knocks on your door, how do you respond? Are you a carrot, an egg, or a coffee bean? If you miss any part of the show, you can catch up at DarrenMarlar.com. That's D-A-R-R-E-N-M-A-R-L-A-R.com. Well, you know the old saying, what goes around comes around? Well, it is now backed by science. A Harvard study confirms that being kind to other people, it's contagious. It's benefiting all of us, so be good for goodness sake. Study participants, they played a public goods game in which one person gave money to other people. And the players didn't know each other before the game, and they never played it more than once with the same person. Well, despite their lack of personal connections, the players' generosity in the first round was tripled by others who were influenced to show even further kindness by giving more money. The conclusion was that when folks uh, are the recipient of generous acts, they pay it forward, creating a domino effect of increasing kindness. Among other fascinating findings by the study's researchers, Harvard University physician Nicholas Christakis and James Fowler, a social scientist at the University of California, San Diego, they say that happiness, loneliness, and obesity also have a contagious effect. This is the Darren Marlar Radio Show Audio Rewind. Hey, I'm Darren Marlar. Welcome to the Darren Marlar Radio Show. Researchers say they may have discovered the tomb of King Tut's wife. She was the one who really wore the pants in Egypt. <laughs> uh, scientists, uh, they have discovered another galaxy located 4 billion light years from Earth. The hidden dwarf dark galaxy it was discovered by astrophysicists at Stanford. Researchers they used a technique called gravitational lensing to discover this new galaxy, and they say the process it could help researchers also learn about other hidden parts of the universe. But you know, here we're talking about the speed of light, and even then it would still take you 4 billion years to get there. So uh, you better be sure to use the restroom before you leave, and you might want to pack a lunch. A Louisiana man, uh, he has been arrested and booked into the same jail now for the 77th time. This time he was caught when he got stuck in the chimney of a business. Now, like, shouldn't there be some kind of limit on how many times you can get arrested, you know, without being confined to house arrest with an ankle monitor and an electrified fence? Deny. Unit 12, there's a break in at the Acme warehouse. The real life story of men and women on the side of law and order. Hey, Bill, uh, shouldn't we go check out that break in? Nah, Batman will get it. Cops in Gotham City. Hey, hey, look, that guy's mugging that old lady. Let's get him. Nah, Batman will save her. Follow the uniformed officers of Gotham City on an average night. Sure was a nice night. Didn't you Didn't you just hear that explosion? Yeah, I did. Do uh, you want to go get some donuts? Well, shouldn't we go nah, and... Nah, Batman's already there. Oh, yeah. Cops in Gotham City. Bad boys, bad boys. What you gonna do? What you gonna do? Don't worry about it. Batman will get him. Hey, pass me some coffee. Oh, yeah, here you go. Hey, if you'd like to keep up with everything that I do, you can sign up for my newsletter. It's absolutely free. It's the Marler Sheet, and you can find it at DarrenMarler.com. That's D-A-R-R-E-N-M-A-R-L-A-R.com. By the way, if you do sign up for the Marler Sheet, that'll also automatically enter you into my contests, which I plan on holding here in the very near future. Uh, I'm Darren Marler. I'm really, I'm really glad that you joined me today. I thought today's show actually went pretty well. Um, well, that is, until I noticed the uh, station engineer climbing the radio tower and shooting off rescue flares. Good night, ladies. Good night, sir. 
Hit it, sweetheart.